The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the November 21st, the Terrific Tuesday edition of today's Trader Z Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I are going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that. And that's this. During this next 53 minutes, I am here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on it at 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question but you can't dial in, we've got you covered. You can send me an email. Send that off to steve at tfnn.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside our Tigers, devil in any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Tuesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Sea of red out there. You got all the U.S. indices that you and I track trading to the downside. Dow's off 65 points. S&P's down 16. NASDAQ's off 147. Russell's down 13. Semis are off 79. Trendy's down 39 points as well. You've got gold trading up 26 bucks. Silver's up 39 cents. Like to be crude is off 28 pennies. Natural gas is basically flat. And the 30 Treasury is flat as well, trading out at 115.27. Leading the charge dollar wise to the upside, you've got Mettler Toledo up 65 bucks, over 6%, 20% for Burlington stores. That's up 27 bucks, nearly 6% for Waters Corp, a 15 point move. Dicom Industries up 14 bucks or 16%. To the downside, it's Charter Communications off 17 bucks, a little over 4%, 2% for Lamb Research, nearly 15 bucks there. MicroStrategy off about 15, nearly 3%. Broadcom down 13, 1% move to the downside. Asmill Holdings off 10, that's a 1.5% move to the downside. Where do we want to begin? You know where we should probably begin? Let's take a look at those. Uh, let's take a look at the daily indices. Let me fire these up here. I'm mostly concerned, or co I'm mostly interested in taking a look at what's going on inside of the uh, semiconductor index, but we're going to go ahead and take a look at each of them just to get a feel for what they are communicating to you and I, at least as of this moment in time. So give me a moment here. They're populating. I'm going to go ahead and turn that screen on here. In the upper left-hand corner, you're going to see the Dow. So let's just rip, a, rip apart the cash indices. Normally, we spend all of our time or most of our time on the futures contract. So what you'll notice inside the Dow is, yes, it was bar number seven of a TD9 count. That says that between today tomorrow and then on Friday the markets will be open on Friday price must spike above yesterday's high to potentially set up a TD9 count top that is the same condition for the S&P 500 right now it's just an inside bar when you get an inside bar what that basically tells us is that the direction that the trend is in should continue so that's that message and that says we should be able to spike above yesterday's high. If we look at the NDX 100, the NDX 100 is a day behind with regard to its TD9 counts out there. So it is only working on bar number seven today. Don't know if this pattern will come to fruition or not, but it's something for you and I to monitor. The Russell 2000, it has an A to B pattern. A to B equals CD to the upside. I don't believe, let me just make sure here. Let's draw this in whether it made it or not. So there's your A to B. I'm just going to move this over to the C point out here. Boom, it did. So the so the Russell 2000, the cash into C, I don't know about the future contract, we have to take a look at it, it actually has a sell the D point pattern. And that only gets negated with a close above this bear shooting star candle that formed on November 15th. That high out there is at 1830. What this does tell us is that price and that oscillator and change line should catch up to each other. Now, that OUL is at 1747 right now, price printing out at 1793. But the Russell does have a top. Here we go to the semi. So in the case of the semiconductor index, let's open 
open this up here. So there's not really an A to B equals CD pattern that you and I could draw in here. Yeah, there's none. None, not a zip, zilch. And, uh, I mean, you've got a bearish reversal candle today, but uh, the only potential top is price getting back to a TD9 count breakdown level. And that was at 3809.75. So when you get back, now that's the second TD9 count breakdown level, but that's an area that can be a top, just like support, getting back to support can be a bottom. So that being said, if we do get a bearish sash candle at day's end, this could be signaling to you and I that the semis are ready to do a little bit of resting and pull back and test that oscillator and change line. That's currently printed at 36.29. So you've got the Russell with the top, the potential with regard to the semis that they've run into resistance. In the case of the Dow Jones or Dow Transports, no topping pattern there. This is telling us price wants to go target 15.231 to 15.326. And NASDAQ composite, nothing there. New York Stock Exchange, nothing there. Just yet now today's going to be bar number seven so we'll have to come back to the new york stock exchange the uh, nasdaq 100 the nasdaq composite um you know we can take a look at them tomorrow but monday's probably going to be the better time to look at that just to see where we're at with regard to the uh, counts out here um nothing else that i see on my charts for us to pay attention so i'm going to go ahead and close these out and uh, what we'll do is, what I'll do the, during the break is I will, I've got another set of screens that I can pull up where we can really analyze uh, a cash index out there. And that's what we'll do is we'll go take a look at the uh, SOX, uh, take a look at what it's doing on its intraday time frames just to get a, a decent feel. But this happened to just as I close that chart out, it brought us back to gold. Everything life is happening for us. So why don't we take a look at Goldilocks out here? So the one thing you're going to see on the daily time frame you are going to see what the heck is that give me a second here hold on okay now we've got it so we take a look at uh, goldilocks it is very likely trading or going to go target the 2017 70 level out there um and 2017 70 is a TD9 count breakdown level. Now, the way that you'll know whether that's going to unfold is if you get it close above 2009.20 out there. Although, that takes me back. So what that is, that is the high of this TD9 count pattern. That was the high from October 20th. So that pattern would get negated and that's at 2009.20. So if we do see a close above that, odds favor, we get up to 2017.70. If price is able to close above that, then the next level of resistance out here, 2019.70, you've got another level of resistance up at 2028.60. Those would be the areas I'd be taking a look at. In the case of silver, right now, silver is testing profile resistance. It did form that new profile yesterday. The top of that profile out here for silver is 23.99. We're trading right now at 23.99. If price can close above that, well, then that would be closing above also its TD9 count breakdown level at 23.92. And what that would then do is that would certainly say that the A to B equals CD pattern uh, is uh, going to uh, fulfill itself, and that would get us up towards that 24.92 level. That would be the case of silver. In the case of the G, so right now we know silver is testing resistance we know gold is actually testing resistance as well that's at 2920 and guess what the gdx is doing beautiful day but it's testing resistance that's its td9 count breakdown resistance level 2953 steve rhodes with tfnn we'll be right back Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com 
TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters Letters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, up, folks. So we're taking a look at the uh, multi time frame charts that I've got here for the semis. So here we can see on a monthly basis, things are uh, bullish. They're bullish because price above a green oscillator and change line that says we've got a rising price oscillator above zero. Those are bullish conditions. Price is trading above a TDNACO breakdown level up at the uh, 3674 level. So that's bullish on a weekly time frame chart. Price is bullish here as well. It's taking on or it's trading above its green oscillator and change line, but it is back towards resistance. That resistance was established on a weekly basis the week of August 4th. And so what price really needs to do is close above that high, that high being 3875.17, to tell us on a weekly basis that uh, things are fine and dandy. In fact, that could set up an A to B equal C to the upside. Bar number seven on the daily time frame or bar number eight, we'll go ahead and complete today. We've already covered the daily time frame. I don't have a topping signal on the 195 minute chart, but it closed below 3749 at, I believe, 2 p.m. Uh, or oh, 1245, but 1245 to be exact. Um, would uh, signal that it's lost its momentum and price should likely move lower. 130-minute chart is giving us that signal right now. As far as where is the next level of support, that next, so I said lower. And so the next level of support, because that's where price would likely target, would be at 37.1108. That turns out that that is a TD9 count breakout area. On the 65-minute chart, that's the pattern that it formed, was a TD9 count top. So if the semis were to close below 37.1108, you could also see at 37.2365 on the 30-minute chart, that was level number two of its TD9 count breakout. A 15-minute chart, that next level to the downside is 37.1108. So perfect. So we got 37.1108. That's the key level to be watching if you are long the semis. If price closes below that, odds favor a further pullback. Now, this pullback may just be your typical two-bar pullback out there. What do you mean typical two-bar pullback? Well, if you take a look at the rally that we've had off of the lows in uh, late October, we have not had two consecutive moves lower, two consecutive sessions where prices move lower. You typically get a two to three bar pullback out there. That tells us just simply how strong the semis have been. You don't need me to tell you that. What you need me to tell you, though, is if we take a look at the, you need me to, to share with you 
um, what the typical retracement might be uh, in days, right? Just it's also a timing thing out there. So this looks like it'll be day number one. We've seen a few day number ones out there. The question is, will we get day number two? So nothing really looks too bad here just yet. But again, for the semis, if you watch 37.1108, I believe that will help you understand what it's communicating to you. And that communication would be price should head lower. So that's the semis out there. Let's get to some of the other questions that actually, some of the questions that did come in. And the first one came in this morning from Peter inside the Tiger's Den. It's Peter from Park City. Happy Thanksgiving to you, Peter. Thanks for uh, being the early bird to catch the worm. And the early bird to catch the worm wants to take a look at the New York Stock Exchange, the advanced client oscillator. So we're going to change panels out here, get to the black background panels. You may remember, if you were listening, when we had that spot, uh, the spot, when we had the advanced client oscillator, this on a trading day of... Um, November 3rd, so it would have been the following session, November 6th, that was a Friday. Uh, November 6th, when we took a look at the New York Stock Exchange Advanced Decline Oscillator, we said, hey, this thing closed in extreme overbought territory. That overbought condition needs to be worked off. By the way, the, what I'm referring to, folks, is panel number two uh, here on this uh, screen. It says Advanced Decline Oscillator off to the left-hand side. The advanced client oscillator is nothing more than the difference between the 39 and 19 period exponential moving average of the advanced decline line. But it provides you and I with a ton of information. I had mentioned on that day when we had gotten up, when we had reconvened, that was on November the 6th out there, that what was likely to happen is the way that the New York Stock Exchange would form its next top would be with a diverging pattern. Why? Because all of the ones since what this takes us back to 2020 out there. So each each significant top that's formed inside of the New York Stock Exchange out here, it's formed with that pattern. That pattern being higher highs with lower highs in the advanced client oscillator. So Peter, that's what we got. Now, things will not get rocking and rolling to the downside until we see that spot volatility X get ab above its 50-day exponents moving average or, and it's well below it, the 50-day right now, that's at the very bottom panel of the screen, is at 1619. The second condition that needs to be met, not necessarily in this order, is that advanced decline oscillator must close below zero for two consecutive sessions. We're still well above that. That doesn't mean that it's not forming a top. But you and I took a look at the New York Stock Exchange, albeit briefly, and it still needs a spike above yesterday's high to possibly trigger a TD9 count out there. So it does look like maybe we're still a few days away from that. That would make sense with being the end of the uh, month with it being a holiday what do you mean with it being a holiday you know that's a great question i'm glad that you asked that what i mean by a holiday and specifically what i mean by thanksgiving and you and i we took a look at this chart here earlier well what wouldn't have been earlier in the week that would have been yesterday last week i believe it was last week it was last week it's right here right now and that's this the chart that you're looking at is 126 years of how the dow is traded 10 days before and 10 days after Thanksgiving. And what we can see here, and right now we are, what, two days before Thanksgiving, and what this tells us is that we should see price continue to move higher. Now, that's not what it looks like at 1124, but generally speaking, the bias over 126-year period is to move higher. And in fact, that says that even over the course of the following 10 days, that is a likely cycle. Now, you might say, Steve-O, you know what? 126 years, 126 years worth of data, that's just too much. All right, about 25 years worth of data. What do we have out here? Well, 25 years worth of data says we rally up into uh, Thanksgiving or the day before uh, because we're not trading on Thanksgiving. And then we move lower for one session. That would be that knee jerk. So that would be Friday, Black Friday's deal. And then the market or the Dow, because we're looking at the Dow here, continues to move higher out there. So the bias that we're taking a look at based on the holiday, based on coming towards the end of the month out here, is most certainly to the upside. And I believe that's what we're going to see here. And that's how the New York Stock Exchange should or could form its next top out there, Peter. And that would be with maybe a TD9 count top with this divergence pattern that is still in place out there. So I hope that that helps you out. I'll know that you also wanted to take a look at the currencies out here. So if you give me a moment, we'll get over, we'll change panels on our screen, and we'll go take a look at the uh, currency pairs. Now, to do that, give me a second here, we'll get to those white background screens. We're gonna look at really just three currency pairs, folks. We're gonna look at the euro, the yen, and the pound. Upper left-hand side, or really the Top row are daily charts. Bottom row are the weekly charts. Let's look at the weekly charts. In the case of the euro, TD9 count bottom. 
What did price do last week? Closed above its oscillator and change line in convincing matter. And what price wants to do here, what the weekly chart is telling you and I, is the euro wants to make a run up to 1.1065 to be exact. If we take a look at the daily time frame, there's nothing out here to suggest otherwise. There is no topping signal. Now, there's an A to B equals CD pattern that's in play. And if we were to get a bearish reversal candle today, that would identify at least a short-term top, maybe something more than that. But short of that, we're in bar number six today. What the euro wants to do is target or head towards 1.1066. Now, 1.065 happens to be also a daily TD9 count breakdown level. So you got a daily and a weekly TD9 count breakdown level inside of the uh, euro out there. If we take a look at the Japanese yen, the Japanese yen has a Rhodes momentum indicator top. It's got a wave number seven top out there, prices below yesterday's low. Odds favor, the yen wants to strengthen. Again, put weakness inside the U.S. dollar. The euro, if it moves higher, will put weakness inside the U.S. dollar. In the case of the Great British Pound, it's got this A to B equals CD pattern. It's completed the one-to-one. -one. If it were to generate a bearish reversal candle, that would be it. That would then suggest a pullback. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. FNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back. 
Welcome back, uh, folks. Let's get uh, back to the uh, currency pairs that we were taking a look at. Uh, give me a moment. We'll get back to those screens out there just to finish it up for uh, Peter. Um, here we go. So we take a look at the pound. On the So you can see the A to B equals CD pattern out there. Now, just because it's completed the one-to-one, -one, that doesn't mean that's the end of the move. Uh, in fact, uh, you're, what you're waiting for now is a bearish reversal candle. Short of that, price should continue to move higher. Now, it's a positive outcome so far today, and that price is closing above its uh, TD9 count breakdown level. So watch for a bearish reversal candle. At the, as the pound continues to strengthen, the U.S. dollar index is going to go ahead and get weaker out there. So, Peter, I hope that provided the information you're looking for for both the currencies and that New York Stock Exchange Advanced Client Oscillator. And again, thanks so much for the request. Uh, thanks for the request uh, from... Uh, um, who is next out here? Let me see. Let me go to this chart. This chart is for Microsoft. So that would be Nancy. Nancy is up next. And Nancy, happy Thanksgiving to you. Nancy is interested in what's going on inside of Microsoft. Well, Nancy, yesterday was waived. It appears that yesterday is going to become a wave number seven top for its daily time frame. I'm just simply going to expand this out. Now, that's courtesy of Basil Chapman and the Chapman wave. That's the so-called rogue wave, although I can't tell you that whether this is, qualifies as a rogue wave is how he defines it in the system. But he does pay attention to wave number seven. That's letter G on my system. And as long as price doesn't take out that high, that pattern remains in effect. Now, what price is doing, that says we have to watch support levels, Nancy. And as you can see, that key support level has already been tested this morning. And that key support level is that green oscillator and change line. Now, if price closes below that oscillator and change line, that's currently printed at 371.34. So why don't you make it 371.30? If price closes below 371.30, odds favor what price will do, what Amazon, what Microsoft will do, is pull back and test support. This is a bullish structured profile, and the support zone on a daily basis for Microsoft is between 365.16 and 366.76. Let's expand back out the. Let's, uh, 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 let's let, let me uh, shorten up the uh, daily time frame chart. Take a look at the weekly chart. On Friday, what you want to watch for there is you want to see if there's a bearish reversal candle. At present, it shows a shooting star. No idea what it will look like on Friday. I think markets close at 1 p.m. on a Friday out there. If we do get a bearish reversal candle, then the weekly chart will have generated a top as well, and that would suggest a pullback to support. Support here in the 353, 355 level. Monthly chart, nothing to worry about there. So let's look at a quick 30-minute time frame chart here from Microsoft. See what kind of signals we have. And what we have out here is a TD9 count top. So, Nancy, I believe you will learn most about Microsoft um, if it closes below 371. Now, let me just uh, get back to this chart here. Let me turn something else on. Let me turn on more of the breakout levels for the uh, TD9 count system out here. So let's just switch those to not three, but uh, unlimited number of lines that are going to print up on my screen out here. What I'm curious to see is when was the last time Microsoft broke through a TD9 count breakout level on a 30 minute time frame? When was that last time? That last time. Son of a gun. That takes us back to about 1130 in the morning on October 3rd. So over a month, nearly two months out there, that level has held. So, Nancy, there's your real clue as to what Microsoft is likely to do if it were to close below 371. It hasn't done it so far. It's tested that daily oscillator and change line. That's a bullish signal. But what you want to watch like a hawk is 371. You get it close below that, that's telling us that at least the character for the 30-minute time frame inside of Microsoft has just changed out there. So I hope that that helps you out. And happy Thanksgiving to you. And again, thank you for the request. Mr. Bill is up next. And Mr. Bill, happy Thanksgiving to you as well. Hope you have a lot of great um, turkey. You didn't want to take a look at Microsoft. How did I end up with Microsoft again? It's uh, Mr. Bill wants to take a look at NVIDIA. Maybe that's right here. No, that's also Microsoft. What did Stevie do? Mr. Bill, my apology for that. Uh, Nancy's hogging the screen. Well, we're just going to have to go back to that chart and we'll put in NVIDIA. Don't know what I did. Oh, there it is. That's very weird. I know I'm weird, but that was very weird. Okay, so let's take a look at NVIDIA. They report, I believe, with earnings, I think was what Mr. Bill was saying here. This has triggered a Rhodes Mintum indicator signal out there. Um, yesterday, it negated a TD9 count top, so that's a bullish outcome. It's still bullish, unless it's this were to generate a bearish reversal candle. We don't have that as we speak. What you do want to watch here, though, is that price is back inside its profile. It closed above it yesterday, looked like a full breakout. If it closes back about 499.6, 
60 today, that will give you that full breakout message. If it closes back below it, it's really kind of like a false breakout move. That doesn't mean the move is over. It just means odd would favor pulling back towards that 484 level. That's the daily green oscillator and change line. Weekly chart here shows that we're up at resistance. Resistance was formed on August 25th. That was a bear shooting star that confirmed a roachment to indicator top. 502.66 is the number that price must close above in order to negate that signal. And on a monthly chart, price must close above 502.66 to negate its TD9 count top. So NVIDIA, watch it as well. If it closes below 499.60, odds favor a further retracement. If we take a look at a 30-minute chart here, just like we did for Microsoft, um, maybe CDE, I don't have anything really, but we do have price below profile support. So perhaps what price is doing, it's going to pull back to test its breakout level. That's at 480.99. We don't want to make that call just yet. We want to, um, we don't want to make that call just yet. No reason for us to do that. So that's what I'd be watching for today, specifically 499.60. You close below that, odds favor a further pullback. Now, just maybe one, one, made, one more day to the downside. Uh, so uh, thanks for that request. G-Motion, thank you also for your request. Happy Thanksgiving to you. You want to take a look at the amazing one, and that would be Amazon. As we take a look at Amazon, what is it doing? Do we have any kind of a top whatsoever? The answer is, nah. There's not even an A to B equal CD pattern on a daily time frame that you and I could take a look at. So what is Amazon doing? So now we've got to resort just back to your typical tools out there, G-Motion. And right now, price is trading back inside its profile. And a close below 143.37 would get us back inside that profile. And that could open up a move back to test another area of support. This is a slightly bearish structured profile. If a move lower in Amazon is only a counter trend move on its daily time frame, price should find support at 139.80. It already did that once. It did that four days ago. So I'd say it closed today below that 143.37-ish level, really 143.26, which suggests that we may get back and test 139.87 out there. On a uh, monthly basis, this could form or should form a TD9 count top uh, this month. This will be bar number nine this month, but that top may not take place until next month out there. On a weekly basis, if this were to generate a bearish reversal candle, that would confirm a Rhodesman to indicator top. On a 10-minute time frame, this set of panels, I don't have the 30-minute for some reason, but we can always put that out there. But on a 10-minute time frame, you've got a Rhodesman to indicator bottom. So this tells us, this is short term out here, but this tells us price should make its way to the oscillator and change line. Currently at about 142.56. If price can get above that, the next battle, 142.78. Above that, there's a battle at 143.80. That's what the 10-minute charts are showing us. If I put this on the 30-minute here, the oscillator and change line would be wrong. That's okay. What do we have here? I don't have anything other than price testing the prior swing point, and that's going to need a close above 142.29. With less, with less than 10 million shares to negate that swing point. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. We're going to take a look at SGBX. Mike um, Morgan Stanley and UNG for Brent. We'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at tfnn.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Folks, you got the Dow trading down 101, SB's off 17, NASDAQ's down 144, gold is up uh, 22 bucks, silver's up 29 cents. We're going to go take a look at ticker symbol SGBX. This is for Dan inside the Tigers and Dan, uh, happy Thanksgiving to you. Thanks so much for the request out there. SGBX. Just want to see. So SGBX a couple days ago had one heck of a uh, ride. Went from about uh, 35 cents or even below that all the way up to a buck 28. That was one heck of a move out there. Right now it's trading out at 83 cents. I know my screen says 80. So Dan, first of all, there's a new profile that is formed. Let me give you the new support and resistance level. Support is at 56 pennies. Resistance up at a buck five. Of course, you know you've got that resistance at a buck 28. That was a TD nine count breakdown resistance level. What else do we know about this? Um, we don't have a top, topping pattern. Obviously, things can top when you get back to a resistance level out there at, at the buck 28. On a weekly time frame, what do we have? We have price consolidating with inside its profile. Resistance there happens to be 88 cents. You're at 83 right now. So a close on Friday above 88 cents would be a bullish outcome. In the monthly chart, there's nothing there for you and I to really pay attention to and to uh, look at. So what else do we want to take later with regard to SGBX, which is safe and green holdings out here? Just got a consolidation right now, Dan, in between that new profile that is formed today, 56 cents and a buck five out there. So I hope that that helps you out on a 30 minute basis. Just take a quick peek here at a uh, intraday type chart. See if this can provide us with any information. And the answer is no, nothing zip zilch out there. So, uh, Dan, thanks again for the request out there. And uh, we'll look forward to your next one. Oh, might be MGA. How about that? But before we get to MGA, we're going to go take a look at the Morgan Stanley. And this is for Nicholas. Nicholas writes in, wants to take a look at Morgan Stanley. MS is the uh, ticker symbol out there, trading at about 79.22. And it also has formed a new daily profile. It did that, looks like, yesterday. So first thing to write down on your pad of paper, Nicholas, is support. And that's what it hit this morning. That's at 78.50. If price were to close below 78.50, that tells us we're going to pull back further. I would be targeting 76.44 if that were to unfold. But so far, support is support. Support is held. Uh, today generated a sell the D point pattern. And it did that because we've got a little bit of a gap to the downside. Let me just make sure. I think we've got like a penny gap. The low from yesterday was 79.34. The high from today is 79.34 as well. Is that a gap? 
Yeah, we're not gonna. We're not. Uh, let's say that it is. Let's make it. Let's use the more conservative approach here, uh, but still price tested support. So it's only a close blow 7850 that would say in the case of Morgan Stanley it wants to trade lower. That's from the daily time frame. The weekly time frame has a buy the D point pattern. That was a couple weeks ago. Price is consolidating with inside its profile. It is a bullish structured profile. Odds favor over time, not tomorrow, not the next day, but the Morgan Stanley wants to go target those sellers and they're hanging out at 8546. Monthly chart not providing us with a ton of information. So it's really up to the daily and up to the uh, weekly charts out there. What's the intraday chart telling us? Well, if we take a look at Morgan Stanley on a 30-minute basis, what do we have? Roads momentum indicator top. A to B equals CD to the downside. It's already generated to buy the D point pattern. But price here remains below support. That's both its oscillator and change line and a below profile support. So we're not getting the warm fuzzies necessarily here. So I think you've got to rely on the daily, Nicholas, and that's that support level at 7850. I uh, hope that that helps you out. Happy Thanksgiving to you as well. Brett wrote in, and Brett wanted to take a look at UNG. So to do that, we're going to go take a look at actually the futures contract that makes up UNG as we speak today. Um, and that is going to be January. Now, I've got the December contract. It is still active, but we are rolling into January. The interesting thing here is I was hopeful that the January contract would show the same kind of thing and pattern, that is, as December. And it's not. What's that same kind of pattern? The same kind of pattern is a road's momentum indicator signal that's been triggered. So right now, Brent, with regard to UNG, I know you do not have a position. You're looking for a position. In order for that to unfold or give you that signal, you need to see a bullish reversal candle. This is more than a one-to-one. -one. A to B equals CD pattern to the downside. In fact, right now, we are at uh, all very close to the 1.272. Now, there's a couple different A to B equals CD patterns out here. There's a larger one. I take a look at January. That would take us all the way back for your A point. Come on. It would take us, well, it would take us all the way back. Let me see if that's correct. November 30th. Let me just, I've got it on, on another screen. It should take us back to August 15th of 2023. Okay, I see what I'm using here. So hold on a second. I'm using this swing point right here. Here's your August 15th. So here's your A, your B, your C, your D. So there's, and here's here's another one, A to B equals C to D. So there's a couple different A to B equals C D patterns. Doesn't really matter which one we use, Brent. What matters is the way that those patterns get confirmed is with a bullish reversal candle. So short of that, you've got 298, which price has basically gotten to this morning. That was the 1.618 A to B equals CD of the larger pattern that we took a look at. Its next price projection level would be down at about 275. What UNG is entirely made up of right now, other than cash or some other uh, uh, some other instruments, not not a natural gas instrument out here, is January of 2024. That's what you need to pay attention to. Watch for a bullish reversal candle. If you get that, then you could fire away at either Boyle or UNG um, out there. Don't be paying attention to the December contract for natural gas. So, Brent, I hope that helps you out. Oh, one last thing out there with regard to natural gas. We are in the unfavorable, and I mean unfavorable. Did I say unfavorable? I mean very unfavorable seasonal time frame for natural gas. I know you would think that December, now this is over 10 years. Let me, let's go back. Let's just make sure. Let's put 32 years worth of data in here. Take a look at November and December over the last 32 years. The two worst performing months out there. I've said this before. I'll say it again. I think all of us, other than being an intraday trader out there, should shelf natural gas and we'll come back and we'll take a look at it uh, maybe in February because in February which is typically over the last 32 years right around February 19th so maybe it'll deliver to us for Valentine's Day a nice juicy rally finally inside of natural gas but just know that you're going against over the last 32 years the most two unfavorable months we're just about to end November here but December is typically worse when it comes to natural gas. So I hope that helps you out. Happy Thanksgiving to you and the family. ELO wants to take a look at 
uh, Alta Beauty. So let me just close this set of charts out here, free up some space, and we'll go take a ULTA. Again, that was for EU, e, uh, ELO inside our Tiger's Den, Electric Light Orchestra. Even though I know that's not what it is, and I hope ELO is not offended by that, it is one of my favorite uh, bands out there. So now let's go take, he didn't care if that's my favorite band, he just wants to know what's going on with Alta. Well, that's MGA. That was the next one that we're going to get to. Let's get to Alta Beauty out here. We take a look at Alta Beauty. What do we know about it? Roads Mentum Indicator Bottom from several weeks ago. Prices trading with inside a profile that formed yesterday. ELO, the support level is between 401.21 and 404.40. I believe it's 404.40. It is 404.45. That's your bullish structured zone. A close below 401.33 will take us back to that oscillator and change on to 395 and change out there. Your resistance levels, there's two of them. 414.17, that's the top of its profile. 418.88 is its TD9 count breakdown level. If, in fact, Alta could close above that, that would tell us about a change in trend. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter. A must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating Investors. Welcome back, folks. We're going to take a look at two other requests here as we close out the show. The first one is to take a look at MGA. MGA, this is for Dan inside the Tiger's Den out there. And MGA right now is trading at about uh, 54.29. Looks to me like it wants to go target that oscillator and change on. The reason it looks like that to me is because price is below the bottom of its bullish structure daily profile. And I don't know where it will close out the day, Dan, but a close below 54.85 would accomplish uh, breaking through support. And I would say I want to go test the next level of support. 
and that would be at 5345. If price closed below 53.45, you could then see a move all, all the way back to 50.38. That would be the bottom of the weekly profile out there. Um, and I don't see anything else here uh, that we need to focus on. So you had that big, huge gap up. Uh, that was a couple of weeks ago. Um, I don't see anything really here that's bearish. What do you mean you don't see anything that's bearish, Steve-O? You're talking about price moving lower today. Again, it's... One of the purposes of the oscillator and change line, one of the primary purposes of developing the oscillator and change line was to help me understand and then allow me to be able to express to you and understand the markets. When a retracement is just a retracement. And when that line is green and it just changed colors out there, that usually tells us, especially if a top has completed, in this case here, uh, that price we get back there and test that. If you're looking for a buy area, that would be the buy area. A test and rejection, that means a close back above it, would be your buy point. So that's what I see when I take a look at MGA. We've got about 30 seconds to take a look at MU, Micron. That's for John C. inside the Tiger's Den. We take a look at Micron out here. What I don't have is any kind of a topping pattern. I don't really see an A to B equal CD pattern on the upside. The retracement just is too, uh, too small. Uh, for that pattern to unfold out here. But here, price might be targeting its oscillator and change line at 76.12. Everything looks really good on the weekly chart so far. Everything looks really good on the monthly. Monthly says Micron wants to get up to 94.07. But it may be getting ready to take a break, and that might just be a two-day break out there. If you take a look at Micron, remember we looked at the semis. They hadn't had any kind of a pullback on its move higher. We did a few days ago get a two-day, well, we've had two two-day, two-bar pullbacks inside of Micron here. Maybe Maybe this is really just getting ready to do that second day, and that would be tomorrow. So, folks, thanks so much for joining me. Please have a terrific Tuesday. I'll be back with you on wonderful Wednesday out there. Be safe out there, and uh, thanks so much for joining us. Take care.